I'm Nathan Ponchard, this is Chasing Cars, and today we're talking about Kia's forthcoming ute called the Tasman. Now that name hasn't been officially announced, although Kia Australia finally released a 90 second TVC with a very tiny moment where one of the sports players in the video throws a dart, it hits a map, and it says the Tasman Sea. So if you can freeze frame it on that, in among all of that sort of not so great acting, is a hint of what the car's name is. And the hotel at the end says Hotel Taz, like it's Tasmania or Tasman. Anyway, the reason why we're already referring to the Ute as the Tasman is that Kia's brand and legal teams in Korea only registered one name in the lead up to this. So inquisitive motoring journalists all over the world didn't really have to try and sift through a whole bunch of names because there was only one. So really it is the industry's worst kept secret. What people don't really know is that Kia Australia actually put forward the name and senior management in Korea loved it straight away. It received a really strong reception and that is going to be the official name. We spoke to Kia's general manager of product planning, Roland Rivero, exclusively recently. Now what we spoke to Mr. Rivero about in detail was what this ute is going to bring to the market and what it's being benchmarked against. Firstly, there are 100 prototypes of the Tasman currently doing the rounds all over the world. In fact, we saw images of one cold weather testing in Sweden, which Mr. Rivero said was happening. Now, the styling of that vehicle, which you can see the center of the glass house of, and that looks very, very similar to the renderings and some of the other prototype shots we've seen of the Tasman. So we kind of know what the middle is going to look like but the front and the back is still yet to be confirmed. According to Mr. Rivero, it is one area where the Tasman is going to go against the status quo and look significantly different from its main ute rivals. And they are Ford Ranger, Volkswagen Amarok, Mitsubishi Triton, etc. The big selling models is what Kia is aiming against. Now, benchmarking wise, there is clearly one ute that stands head and shoulders above everything, and that is the Ranger and its Amarok twin. And it's the Ranger that Kia Australia is benchmarking it against. Mr. Rivero said they are doing every nuance of that car, from its seat comfort to its rear legroom to its payload to how much padding is in the seats, the welding on the chassis rails. They are tearing this vehicle apart to make sure that they can make the Tasman as good as they possibly can when it debuts in Australia sometime before the end of the financial year in 2025. So before June 30 next year, we will have the Tasman in Australia. Of the 100 prototypes going around the world, two of them are coming to Australia. They're arriving in late April or early May, and they will be here for suspension testing and a whole bunch of other stuff that Australia is useful for. This is the first time that Kia Australia has been involved so early in the vehicle development stage, which kind of underpins just how important the Tasman Ute is for Australia. This vehicle could add tens of thousands of sales to Kia Australia's bottom line, taking it to potentially over 100,000 sales a year and the number two manufacturer position, even though they'll say that's not what they really care about. Now, this Ute is going to be just like most of its competitors. It's a separate chassis Ute, independent front suspension, leaf sprung live axle at the back, using on the whole, a 2.2 litre smart stream or used to be R-series turbo diesel four cylinder tied to an eight speed torque convert automatic and that will be for the majority of the vehicles. That is what sells in Australia and that engine has been used in a bunch of other Hyundais and Kias over the years, though much recently refined with a new capacity and much more smoothness. It runs in Hyundai Santa Fe, Hyundai Palisade, Kia Sorento, and it will be the main engine in the Tasman. Now, in terms of other powertrains that are available, Mr. Rivero said they really can't ignore the fact that the Ranger and Amarok have a huge powertrain lineup. But Hyundai Kia also has a huge powertrain lineup. And so going into a separate chassis vehicle in a rear wheel drive application with a big engine bay shouldn't be too hard for the amount of engines that are accessible for this ute. The ute will be available in single and dual cab. It won't have an extra cab. It'll be cab chassis and pickup, 
but like I said, the main engine will be the 2.2 Smart Stream turbo diesel with an eight speed automatic. The best power that that engine puts out in any vehicle is in a rear drive application in a GV80, it's 154 kilowatts and 441 newton meters. Those numbers may change for the Tasman. Other engines that are seemingly available is intriguingly the three liter turbo diesel inline six that's also in the Genesis GV80 SUV. It produces 204 kilowatts and 588 newton meters in that vehicle tied again to an eight speed torque converter automatic. And that is a possibility for the Tasman, although that engine only goes into that premium SUV and may be potentially too expensive, though its main competitors, Ranger and Amarok, have a three litre turbo diesel V6, and that's the premium engine, so why not? Other options include the 3.3 litre twin turbo petrol V6 that used to be in the Kia Stinger, that's also in the Genesis GV80, has run in a bunch of other Genesis vehicles, and that engine is a possibility for Tasman. The main markets for Tasman is Australasia, Africa, mainly South Africa, the Middle East, and Asia. And so given that the Tasman is going to the Middle East, it gives an opportunity for something potentially like that twin turbo petrol V6 to be used because it has a potential volume in the Middle East. Now, Mr. Rivero said that any drivetrain that is less than 5% of the model mix will not be looked at because it won't meet their business case. But with the Middle East global demand looking like they love petrol performance engines, there is a chance that Kia in the future will have a Tasman version to compete against the Ford Ranger Raptor because it has a twin turbo petrol V6. In discussing the powertrains with Mr. Rivero, he said that the turbo diesel four cylinder will absolutely have the eight speed torque converter automatic, not the Hyundai N derived eight speed wet dual clutch automatic that is in some of those SUVs I mentioned earlier, the Palisade, the Santa Fe and the Sorento because it's all about durability. He said durability is absolutely paramount. Not that the dual clutch isn't a durable transmission because it's for Hyundai N designed to go around the Nürburgring, but durability and reliability have to underpin the Tasman, according to Marista Rivero, for this vehicle to be a success. So just like the Kia Carnival diesel, it will have an eight-speed torque converter auto. Now, I asked Mr. Rivero what will set the Kia Tasman apart from its vast competitor set because there are a lot of utes in this category and the Tasman is coming in very late. This is 2025 when the Hilux debuted in 1968. So it's had some time. And as he said, we've come in late to it, but we're going to work on it to make it as good as we possibly can. We cannot afford to come in half-baked. So when asking him where it's going to stand out, he mentioned the styling, as I've already mentioned earlier. Now, based on imagery we've seen, we know how the Tasman is going to look. It's glass house, meaning the main part of the body is going to be very angular and upright. It will have matte gray, black kind of inserts above the wheel arches. It will have a kick up in the rear door line, halfway through the rear door, and that will all be very boxy. We can see through the camouflage to see that at the front, just like an EV9 and some of the other new facelifted Kias, it will have vertical headlamps. It will be the only ute in its category that has that. At the back, all you can see is that it has a very big and tall sided tray. So leading to what Mr. Rivero said, the Tasman will challenge the status quo in the way it looks. He said it will offer either the best or near the best rear seat comfort and legroom of any ute in its class, dual cabs and he said that it will fit a Euro pallet in the tray and will have among the best rear tray space and load capacity. There were three non-negotiables for Kia Australia in asking what they wanted out of the Tasman, and they've pushed really hard to Australianize this Korean-made single and dual cab ute as much as possible. They were three and a half ton towing capacity, five-star ANCAP rating, and at least one ton payload in the tray. Those three areas alone set the Tasman right at the top of its class in terms of really not being better than anything, but at least equaling the best. It can carry a Euro pallet in its tray and apparently the only other utes in its class that can do so is the Ford Ranger, the Volkswagen Amarok and the new generation Mitsubishi Triton. So again, it is hitting the benchmark 
in those areas. The other area that will set the Tasman apart in the future is electrification. Now Kia is starting with a completely new platform for this vehicle, so it's already intended to be electrified in some way, shape or form. And while Mr. Rivero said it won't launch in that way, it is definitely on the cards for Tasman. It is gonna be across the range for every Kia, and this you at some point in the future will be electric in some way. And finally, to what is a calling card for Kia in Australia, it is a seven year unlimited kilometer warranty. Will the Tasman also have the same? Mr. Rivero said it will definitely be seven years, but as for the unlimited kilometerage, that is to be decided, especially for fleets and ABNs, as compared to private buyers. That is still a watch this space kind of moment. But he did say it's something that we'll look at as a way to really kickstart Tasman sales and have a good fast start. So at this stage, watch this space, meaning this ute might be late to the party, but it is not gonna come in quietly. It is gonna come in with as broad a range as possible and then infill with powertrains from there. So Kia Tasman, you'll be seeing a lot of those on the road in 18 months time. Thanks for watching.